given matrix A and matrix B, we're asked to find the inverse of AB and B inverse times A inverse. Let's begin by determining A times B as well as B inverse and A inverse. So here we have A times B. The product will be a two by two matrix. To find the element in row one, column one, we multiply row one in the first matrix and column one of the second matrix. So A sub one one is equal to negative three times negative five, which is positive 15, plus four times two, which is eight, which is equal to 23. To find the element in row one, column two, we multiply row one in the first matrix and column two in the second matrix. This gives us negative three times negative seven, which is positive 21, plus four times three, which is 12, which is equal to 33. And now let's find the element in row two, column one, by multiplying row two in the first matrix and column one in the second matrix. We have one times negative five, which is negative five, plus negative two times two, which is negative four, which is negative nine. And now to find the last element in row two, column two, we multiply row two in the first matrix and column two in the second matrix. We have one times negative seven, which is negative seven, plus negative two times three, which is negative six. Here we have a sum of negative 13. And now let's determine B inverse and A inverse. Because A and B are both two by two matrices, we can use the formula below to determine the inverse. B inverse is equal to one divided by AD minus BC, which is the determinant of matrix B, which is negative five times three, which is negative 15, minus negative seven times two, which is negative 14. And then we have times the two by two matrix where we change the position of the elements in the main diagonal which gives us three in row one, column one, and a negative five in row two, column two. And then we change the sign of the other two elements. So negative seven becomes positive seven, the two becomes negative two. Simplifying, we have one over negative one. So if we multiply the matrix by negative one, it's just gonna change the sign of the elements. So we have negative three, negative seven, two, five for B inverse. And now let's find A inverse. We have one over negative three times negative two, which is positive six, minus four times one, which gives us minus four, and then times the two by two matrix where we change the position of the elements along the main diagonal. So we have negative two in row one, column one, and negative three in row two, column two. And we change the sign of the remaining elements. So we have negative four in row one, column two, and negative one in row two, column one. Notice a fraction simplifies to one half. So one half times negative two is negative one. One half times negative four is negative two. One half times negative one is negative one half. And finally, one half times negative three is negative three halves. And now it's finished by determining the inverse of AB as well as B inverse times A inverse. The inverse of AB is equal to one over, again we have AD minus BC, which is now 23 times negative 13 minus 33 times negative nine, times the two by two matrix, where again we change the position of the elements in the main diagonal. So we have negative 13 in row one, column one, and 23 in row two, column two and change the sign of the other two elements. So you have negative 33 in row one, column two, and positive nine in row two, column one. Simplifying, 23 times negative 13 minus 33 times negative nine simplifies to negative two, which gives us negative one half times the two by two matrix. Performing the scatter multiplication, we have 13 halves 33 halves, 
negative 9 halves and negative 23 halves. And now we need to find B inverse times A inverse. To find the element in row 1, column 1, again we multiply row 1 in the first matrix and column 1 in the second matrix. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3 plus negative 7 times negative 1 half is positive 7 halves which is equal to 6 halves plus 7 halves or 13 halves. To find the element in row 1, column 2, we multiply row 1 in the first matrix and column 2 in the second matrix. We have negative 3 times negative 2 which is positive 6 plus negative 7 times negative 3 halves which is positive 21 halves. Well, 6 is equal to 12 halves. 12 halves plus 21 halves is 33 halves. To find the element in row 2, column 1, we multiply row 2 in the first matrix and column 1 in the second matrix. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 5 times negative 1 half is negative 5 halves. Well, negative 2 is equal to negative 4 halves, Negative 4 halves plus negative 5 halves is a negative 9 halves. And then finally for the element in row 2, column 2, we multiply row 2 in the first matrix and column 2 in the second matrix. We have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, plus 5 times negative 3 halves, which is negative 15 halves. Negative 4 is equal to negative 8 halves, negative 8 halves plus negative 15 halves is negative 23 halves. And now if we compare the inverse of AB to B inverse times A inverse, notice how the two matrices are equal. And this happens to be one of the properties of inverse matrices. I also want to point out that the order of the multiplication is important. Remember, matrix multiplication is not commutative. A inverse times B inverse does not give the same result, which I already worked out, and we can see here that B inverse times A inverse is not equal to A inverse times B inverse. I hope you found this helpful.